Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Airbus pilot and in today's video I want to show you a little bit about the different levels of ECAM warnings and the stuff that can happen to you in the Airbus. This will enhance your understanding and will give you a little bit of background as to what the different warning levels are for and how to deal with them. So there are three different levels of ECAM warnings or cautions. And then there is one additional. We're going to start from the lowest to the highest. And at the end, I will also show you a couple of reset procedures that are available in the Airbus world. But we're going to start with something very simple over here. And that is going to be just an advisory. Now, an advisory simply tells you that the system parameter is outside of the norm, but doesn't really need any further action just yet. For some of them, there are some QRH procedures available, such as the engine vibration, for example. And I think engine vibration is actually a very good example to start with. So let's go ahead and inject an engine high vibration into our simulator over here and have a look at what that looks like. So you can see down here the vibration engine number one and one starts to blink and as a certain threshold value is exceeded you can see that the according system display in this case the engine display is automatically called up and the affected parameter is blinking now in case of this particular fault there is a QRH procedure available for engine high vibration which basically tells you reduce the thrust lever until the condition stops now just to give you an idea what that looks like if I'm reducing the thrust lever at engine number one right now, you can see that the vibrations are actually going down and as a certain threshold value in case of the vibration for engine number one, 6.0 is um, reached and the severity of the situation goes below that, you can see the parameter stops flashing and with that the ECAM procedure is complete. Alright, so that much for our first malfunction. Now, this is just an advisory and does not require any immediate crew action. But for some of those things there are QRH procedures available like for this one. Okay, let's go ahead and clear the malfunction. You can see it's now back to normal. Let's close the engine page. And with that we are now back to a normal condition. Now, this was just advisory. Now let's go ahead and start with the actual ECAM warnings or cautions. And we're going to start with level 1, and that's an amber caution, which requires crew monitoring, and is usually a failure leading to a loss of redundancy or system degradation. Now, let's go ahead and have a look at an example, and for this one, we are going to have something happen just now. And here is something. You can see there is no oral warning or anything. Um, there is just an amber message and generally they are without procedures. In some cases like this one there is a procedure associated with it. So what exactly has happened over here? Well we've got fuel, love tank, pump, one, low pressure. We can confirm this down here on the system display and you can see it on the overhead from the fault light as well. Whenever you get an ECAM message, it's always important that you cross-check that the condition that's described actually exists. So just because it tells you left tank pump one low pressure up here, that does not mean that the pump actually has low pressure. So always confirm it either on the system display or by looking at the overhead panel where you can see the fault light up here as well. The fault light and system panel down here are driven from a different computer than the ECAM message up here, meaning that both are usually necessary in order to confirm that something is wrong. So in this case there is a procedure associated that's left tank pump one off. So go fuel, left tank, pump one, off. Okay, ECAM action complete, clear fuel, status. Whenever a status shows we check if there is any reset procedure available. For this one there isn't. So in up systems, left tank pump one, remove status, ECAM action complete. Okay, so let's go ahead and repair that fuel pump real quick, so that we have a clean ECAM once again. Okay, pump is repaired, it's working again, problem solved. 
So this is the lowest level of ECAM caution or warning that you can get, level 1. Now, again, this usually indicates a failure leading to a loss of system redundancy or system degradation, but nothing severe. Now let's move up one level to an ECAM level 2. And this once again is an amber caution, which is accommodated by a single chime playing acoustically to draw the true attention to the system. So this already increases the level of severity by actively drawing the attention of the crew there. Now, for a level 2 amber caution, the flight crew should be aware of the configuration or failure, but does not need to take any immediate action. However, time and situation permitting, these cautions should be considered without delay to prevent any further degradation of the affected systems. So, let's go ahead and have a look at a nice example over here. And for this one, we are going to get a failure right now. So, you could hear the acoustic chime, you can see the master caution is illuminated, and you can see some message popping up down here on the ECAM. Okay, let's go ahead and cancel that. Now, what's happened? Auto flight, auto thrust off, thrust levers move. In other words, the auto flight system has failed. We can also see this indicated by the thrust lock indication up here on the FMA. Okay, so, this one is a level 2, because in general, the flight crew does not need to take immediate action. As you can see, when the auto thrust system fails, the engines are just frozen at the last power level they had, and with that the aircraft continues to fly just normally. However, the situation should be considered without delay when the time and situations permit to affect any further degradation of the affected systems. For example, in case of this particular malfunction, if the aircraft was in a descent and all of a sudden leveled off, the engines might still be in idle thrust and that could lead to problems. Okay, so, what does the run have to do? Thrust levers move. Now that's because obviously right now our thrust levers are in the climb detent and we need to synchronize them with the actual thrust the engines have right now. Okay, so let's do that. More or less, here we go. Okay, clear auto flight. Status. Now, we gotta think about is there any possible reset procedure? Well, Autothrust has two channels available, so if we change over to Autopilot 2, you can see we might be able to engage it again. So, as you can see, in some of these cases we can already solve some of those problems. Okay, so in this case, since the Autothrust is now engaged again, I'll put the thrust levers back into the climb detent, and the problem is solved. But, if we look at the status page, even here, everything's normal again. This is not always the case, depending on the malfunction and what has happened. For example, if we go back to Autopilot 1, you can see the auto throttle fails again. And then we do get some status page down here as well. Okay, well, let's go ahead and clear the malfunction. And then we are going to go into the highest level of ECAM messages. And that's going to be level 3. Now, as you've probably guessed already, if level 2 is an amber caution, including an acoustic alert, level 3 is gonna go red. And that's exactly true. So, the ECAM failure or mode level 3 is a red warning, which means the configuration of failure requires immediate action. And that is because, for example, the aircraft may be in a dangerous condition, or limited flight conditions, such as a stall or overspeed, or it is a system failure alerting flight safety, such as an engine failure or excessive cabin altitude. This is going to be accompanied by the red master warning, of course, and the continuous repetitive chime that is going to play. Now let's go ahead and have a look at an example of one of these cautions. And this one we are going to have smoke detected in the aft cargo compartment. So. Master warning is illuminated, we get the continuous repetitive chime, which I'm going to cancel right now. And then let's go into the ECAM procedure, but before we do that, always confirm. We indeed have a smoke indication on the cargo smoke panel. Okay, so, smoke, off cargo smoke, cabin fans off. That's ventilation, cabin fan off. 
agent discharge. Okay, so aft cargo smoke or cargo smoke aft agent discharge. Okay, this takes a little while because obviously the fire agent now discharges into the cargo compartment. Pray that you don't have any livestock in there. But well, okay, can't really prevent that. And as you can see, next up, when on ground, before opening cargo doors, passengers disembark. We also have this accompanied by a red land as soon as possible, which means put it down on the nearest suitable airport. And obviously, the aircraft is in a dangerous condition for um, this because a cargo fire can obviously, in the worst case, rip the entire aircraft apart. Okay, and that is failure mode number three. Now, let me go ahead and quickly extinguish that fire in the background over here. All right, now it's cancelled. Obviously, we are left with a status indication over here because the even though the system no longer detects the fire condition, you never really know if something might still be happening in the back. But okay, let me go ahead and um, repair that real quick. So down here on the Phoenix, if you go to maintenance and failures, you can go ahead and clear stuff like this. Alright, here we go. And now the status page, well, still remembers that. I could kill the two flight warning computers in order to get that back, but we'll just have to live with it for now. In any case, the system panel itself is now back to normal configuration. Now, there's two more things that are good to know when you are flying in your favorite Airbus aircraft, and that is when something happens, conditions might be resettable. Now, resettable means that by turning the system off and on again, basic computer logic, and remember this is a flying computer, the problem can be solved. So let's go ahead and have a look at an example. So, we did get the acoustic chime, so this is a level 2 alert. Okay. Auto flight, FAC 2 fold, FAC 2, off, then on. So, flight controls, FAC 2, off, wait for a second, then on. As you can see, the ECAM message is gone, and there is nothing new in the status page. In other words, the reset was successful, and the problem itself is solved. Now there is one more that we can go into, and this one is going to be a condition that requires a reset through a circuit breaker. Now, small difference here, A320 actually has circuit breakers that can be used for system resets. Those are generally found at the top over here, and then there are circuit breakers which cannot be used for a system reset. Those are found in the back over here. Newer Airbus aircraft, such as the A330, don't even have circuit breakers here. They only have some reset buttons but no actual circuit breakers. Those are all located in the avionics compartment downstairs. Okay, let's go ahead and have a look at an example of such a condition. Auto flight, FCU one fold, barrel reference, check. So the auto flight system or the FCU has two channels. One of them has just failed. If you go into the system reset table in the abnormal procedures section of the Airbus FCOM or in the QRH, you will find that for this particular fault, you can run a reset procedure. There might be certain conditions associated with it, but in general it's going to tell you, okay, do the following. We're going to pull the circuit breaker, and that one's located over here, so auto flight, FCU1. We're going to pull that out. As you can see, that basically makes no change yet. But, if we are going to push the circuit breaker back in again, then the system might or might not come back to life. So let's go ahead and push the FCU-CB back in. And as you can see, the failure condition is gone. Now don't be surprised if it takes the aircraft a little while to recover from the failure condition. In some cases, the Airbus actually needs, you know, um, a couple minutes in order to sense that everything is working again. But I hope this one gave you a little insight into the failure and warning cases that you can get from your ECAM and how to deal with them. Thank you very much for watching. I sure hope that you like those and leave your feedback in the comment section below. Be sure to like if you really like the video as it does really help out the channel. 
And with all of that said, I'm really looking forward to see you all again on the next one. Thank you very much, like, comment and subscribe, and if you really love what I'm doing, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you for watching, and see you all again on the next one.